This is a unique looking piece. It is. And what the artist is getting into is there should be a place where one can have quiet thoughts. Oh, are you going there? So you can go I'm in. Go in here. Jim Roop could change your life. Whole well, city's an art museum. Or at least he'll alter your walk in the park. I think that the city is a lot more interesting if you know what's around you. And that's really why I did it. So you're going for a stroll and you happen upon this. Looks and like it, it's a manhole cover. And it's the only subterranean artwork in the whole city. He says it's also the least known work in Seattle and one of the most walked on. But everybody's getting on the trolley. Oh yeah. And they're looking ahead, they gotta look down. Or look up. Yep, so this guy right here has no idea. Yep, and if they're not looking at their phone, they're looking at their feet. <laughs> you miss a lot of good stuff. And he would know, because he wrote the book. Art in Seattle's Public Spaces opens our eyes and opens our Seattle. Well, there's over 350 pieces of art in the city and it doesn't cost you a thing to look at them. They're all there, free of charge. Like the leaves overhead at one of the Amazon buildings. It kind of casts a green hue. It us. does, right. it does, that's the whole idea. It's if you're in the forest, <laughs> courtesy of artist Spencer Finch. Thank you, Spencer. This looks like Basket Weaving 101 right here. Yeah, and the artist actually learned how to weave baskets from women up in Everett. And this commemorates a 1917 laundry strike. And this is a laundry building well. right over here. Ah, yes. <laughs> a lot of times people will look at a work and not like it, and then they learn something about it. It's pretty cool. Jim's had this idea since high school to provide a sort of guidebook. There was uh, artwork to look at and nothing to tell you what it was and how it got there. He interviewed more than 90 artists. This is a Japanese artist who created this, and he was inspired uh, by working with his five-year-old daughter, and he was playing with the rice cake and started molding things and came up with this kind of shape. That one is tucked away just off Elliott Bay. This ghostly parking lot booth is a callback. And then the artist who created it did all sorts of research to see what used to be here before all the development in South Lake Union. So the next time you go take a walk, take Jim's book along with you. And the neon light just keeps on going and going and going. And so does the art all over town. Thank you, Michael. And you can meet Jim in person at University Bookstore on Friday, April 19th.